I'm going to request you all of the viewers to watch it with a clear open mind. Don't think yourself as with your personal identity of what you represent. Think in general. Think the truth. And this is what the facts are. Okay, so hello everybody. Today we are on our podcast we have Sakshi Sanke who has a very deep political knowledge of almost every single activity that goes on in the world. And so today we are going to talk about uh, the contemporary political situation on India. So, yeah. so Sakshi. Hello, hi. Thank you for having me. And so today, begin uh, with the podcast. Yeah, so today uh, I was thinking yeah. about the CNN Act. Okay, which, uh, so... Um, Okay, so the thing is, it's the act is CAA, which is C- Citizenship Amendment Act. Okay. okay, so basically, this act, uh, this is a very controversial act. It was actually passed four years ago. That was in 2019. Okay, but it was rejected. Okay, because of a lot of oppression from people from different communities. Yeah, and we'll we'll go into the details. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I would just like to give the brief status. Uh, this was impl- like this was passed in two thousand nineteen. Nineteen that is December, but soon after passing that, I, it was not approved by uh, many states and the uh, religious community, like Muslim community, oppressed that act. I see. So, yeah, and uh, CAA is basically Citizenship Amendment Act, and yeah. it was like introduced with one more act. Okay, it was NRC. And it was, uh, I don't remember the full form of it, but it was related to something like, uh, I'll just give brief of our, brief about yeah, it because okay. this NRC Act is not implemented right now. CAA is implemented as of now. Okay. okay. Yeah. So NRC was basically like, uh, we have a list of all the residents. Okay. Uh, NRC, R stands for resident. Okay. And N yeah. stands for non-resident. I don't know about C. But yeah, we can search that up. So basically, uh, uh, we have a list, okay, of all the Indian residents, okay. And uh, as we all know, every country has a lot of illegal immigrants, right? So yes, yes. in India, we are surrounded by Pakistan as well as Afghanistan. Afghanistan. This is I'm talking about land borders, like as well as Bangladesh, Nepal, yeah. Bhutan, Bhutan, and Bhutan. China as well. So like uh, the most number of illegal immigrants we have is from Bangladesh, okay. Bangladesh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is very like extreme peak level immigration okay, that is okay. they so the thing is we have this river in west bengal yeah, which yeah, connects yeah. to bangladesh and uh, through that river a lot of immigrants are trying to you know get inside of yeah, india yeah so. yeah so we have a lot of bangladeshi muslims in india who are surviving with us like uh, reaping all the benefits which are you know provided to every indian citizen indian so citizen, and right. our, yeah so as we all know bangladesh is a muslim country it's an islamic country yeah yeah so yeah, so all these immigrants, illegal immigrants are basically, our neighboring country are basically Pakistani country. Like all, sorry, uh, are all Muslim majority country, not Pakistani. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Muslim, Muslim majority, majority Yeah. So all the illegal immigrants are basically Muslim and they are not registered as a resident yeah, in yeah. our country's list, okay. right? Resident list. Okay. So all of these Muslims, they were supposed to be, who are not in the list, they were supposed to be deported, okay? Yeah. In that NRC Act. So, a lot of like Muslim majority. So, we have this union, Muslim union in our country, which was uh, kind of uh, oppressed with that. And they were kind of like, you know, uh, sad by the fact that they are deporting all these Muslims Muslim, who came yeah, yeah. to seek refuge in our country. Okay. okay. So, they were not really happy about it. And it was kind of partial towards them. Hmm. But now uh, the act was kind of demolished because it got so much oppression. But the CAA Act kind of persisted and it made a comeback in uh, 2024. And it was again implemented on 11th March 2024. Now it is fully implemented. Okay. However, there are full, a few states like Kerala and West Bengal who refused to implement that act as of now. They are like, uh, as we all know, um, we have uh, Tamil Nadu's, uh, I'm not sure Tamil Nadu or Karnataka's, uh, the Prime Minister, his name is Stalin. Okay. If you know. Uh, So his name is Stalin. Basically, he said that he will not implement CAA Act in his state. State. Okay. I I believe he's from Tamil Nadu. I, I believe, yeah. So he said he won't implement that act in Tamil Nadu. So now let's dive deep into CAA. Okay. So, as the name suggests, it is a Citizenship oh, Amendment yeah. Act. So, what does it say? It says that it will provide citizenship. But, here's the catch. Here, the citizenship will be provided 
to every other religious minority okay apart from muslims okay okay so, so why why particularly uh, muslim were you? not muslims i yeah, i'll get back to that yeah, yeah. Okay, okay so the thing Sorry. is yeah so the thing is citizenship amendment act so this is basically for people who are living in pakistan afghanistan and bangladesh okay? okay these three countries we have to make sure that these three countries the immigrants who are coming to india okay to yeah. seek refuge our country is very welcoming to all the refugees okay we are not like kind of oppressing all the refugees from the yeah, country because correct, they correct. seek to uh, they seek a shelter in our country and we don't really oppress anyone yeah. so yeah uh, keep in mind bangladesh afghanistan and pakistan, pakistan. these three country okay. yeah so from these three countries hindus christians buddhist jain parsi okay and uh, a few minorities which i might have missed out on so apart from muslim these minorities from pakistan bangladesh and uh, afghanistan they can seek refuge in india i mean they can come as an immigrant, immigrant. and they will be given citizenship very very easily okay okay indian citizenship okay. so they will not require any kind of passport or they won't require any kind of you know right there is a duration if you want yeah. to get citizenship you have to stay in that particular country but any minority like hindu christian jain parsi or um, any other yeah, which buddhist, is not yeah, muslim like said, yeah. buddhist yeah so from these three country they can get refugee and i mean obviously citizenship so in our country on on the basis of any valid identity for example you can literally provide birth certificate or like 10th mark sheet 12th mark sheet okay, okay? yeah so yeah. on the basis of that they can get indian citizenship and they can avail every single benefit, benefit. that is being provided to indian citizens as they are also a part of indian citizenship indian citizenship okay. act right yeah so now as you asked me that question why not muslims so, yeah. okay so that's a really good question and i really have to talk about it because uh, at this point you must be feeling that this is kind of wrong because we are not yeah, letting no, no, because, uh, yeah yeah people yeah, also but, discussed but, with me that uh, they told me that you know like uh, muslims now right now they have a uh, like a lot of what do you say kids and offspring so it i don't no I, yeah, yeah. That, that is because you know the thing is they are practicing more on the fact that they have to spread their religion and okay. they have to reach global dominance okay yeah, yeah. even you know that right because they yeah, are yes. moving at a massive speed right now and if you see every single muslim is having at least three kids at least Correct. i'm talking about and they are not having any kind of restrictions on how many kids they can have but whereas us hindus we can only have two kids and kids, if yeah. we have more than two kids is it the same with you guys christians yeah even you guys are like no but you guys belong from minority right yeah no but uh, there is a like a general consensus that two kids is the limit you should have acha so even you yeah. guys have to abide yeah, so that like law so like normalized you have a number every okay. family should have okay so yeah. apart from muslims everybody has to have yeah. two kids and if they go beyond that bar they won't be allowed in any kind of government job or like yeah, yeah, scheme kind of services Correct. and the benefits yeah 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 so the thing is um, why muslims are not allowed in cwa yeah. so neil if you take a look at the countries which i have mentioned which is pakistan afghanistan and bangladesh so before the partition of india india was akhand bharat yes pakistan yeah. afghanistan bangladesh, bangladesh all in one was india okay so india was partitioned because muslims were not feeling safe in india okay. so hence both they were given all these countries okay like pakistan afghanistan and bangladesh okay so the thing is the country are muslim majority country hmm. and we all know in pakistan what is the current situation of all the hindus as well as all the muslims yeah, yeah. they are literally living under oppression so if we give citizenship to any pakistani which is actually going to be a muslim yeah. right 99% like not 99 but like 95% of pakistanis are muslim rest five rest five are like indigenous all tribes not like not even 5% is hindu it must be mixed like 1% must, must be hindu 1% yeah, must yeah. be christian yeah so if we start giving citizenship 
to the Muslim tribe, which was coming from all these three countries, mm. which was a majority in their home country, then just imagine like what will be the condition of our country? Because if Muslims are not feeling safe in their own homeland, which yeah. was partitioned to make them feel safe, correct? Right. Because you know, right? Jinnah, Muhammad Ali yeah, Jinnah Muhammad was Jinnah. the. He was yeah, very yeah, persistent yeah. on the partition of India. And the, yeah, exactly. So why did they? Yeah. yeah, why did they want a partition just to feel safe in their own religion and in their own land? So they were given yeah. a land. So if you are not feeling safe in your own land, which is a which is your majority land, like ninety nine, like ninety five percent of the population you are surviving with is of your same religion. and if you're not feeling safe over there how can we provide you citizenship it is it is not feasible right and like yeah, muslims perfect. and like christians hindus yeah. and, and all the population in india surpass the limits exactly and uh, and we all know like if a muslim majority country is uh, like you know if we are surviving in a muslim majority country and if we are in minority then we all know how much oppression we have to face like yeah, yeah. that is, we have to follow their laws we have to like you know uh, walk under their guideline otherwise they won't let us survive because right now if you look at pakistan's condition pakistani hindus condition they are they are literally not even given jobs or they are living under poverty line i think that might be the same with christians as well yeah, because yeah. but uh, is it not like they cannot uh, immigrate back to india that is why, that is why we have created this act See, only okay, for yes. minor only for minorities and if just like me you yourself tell me if yeah. we start immigrating muslims from this muslim majority countries then yeah. how how big of a chaos our country is going yeah, to face yeah. yeah so exactly this is why only minorities from this countries because we guys like hindus christians we all are facing problems in their muslim majority yeah, yeah, country yeah. Even, even in bangladesh people are literally forcing christians to convert to islam, islam. as in hindus to convert to islam and if they don't convert they are literally killing their family members so the condition over there is literally critical and these people i mean us people from our religion cannot really take a step ahead and raise their voice against them yeah, yeah, yeah. because uh, as we all know if uh, that country is a muslim majority country nobody gives you know attention to this kind of minorities yeah, yeah. but indeed india is a secular country so that's why we can you know raise our voice we all have our yeah, yeah, union kind of a, yeah they can yeah. have a, you have a very good say for your rights exactly i mean as we all know india is a secular country and it is written yeah. in a constitution but if you look at pakistan it is Uh, even on the passport of pakistan yeah. it is written that islamic republic of pakistan okay. same, same on bangladesh islamic republic something like that it is yeah. islamic republic as well as afghanistan it is also an islamic republic so if you know it yeah. is not a secular country okay. our country is just republic of india republic of india yeah we represent yeah. almost yeah every kind of faith so people have the freedom yeah. to practice their own faith so. exactly and the thing is um, we are living okay so if you take a take a look at india yes and we we are very liberal okay and our country is very multilingualistic and people inter religion our country is very diverse okay first of all and uh, i don't see any community in our country may it be christian may it be um, muslim india is majorly populated by hindus which is yeah. by default yeah that is like indians are hindus yeah 78% yeah. is hindus 14% yeah, is and muslims and the rest 1% uh, it's all catholics jews then uh, both the centuries yeah. yeah but if you take a look nobody is living uh, like the other minorities are not living beyond poverty line and nobody yeah, correct, correct. and none of the hindu is troubling or like asking them to convert or like we are not ruling over yeah, yeah, like right, right. minorities but it is the you know opposite in all the muslim majority yeah. countries <laughs> if you if you guys or if we collectively hindus and christians if we were living in pakistan right now we yeah. would literally have to you know walk on their yeah, commands laws and yeah, right. yeah but as of now i think we are doing extremely good in each of our like even all the christians are doing absolutely well as well as muslims as well as hindus we are we are all living in harmony and we all respect each other's religions right. and differences right. etc and that is not the case in all the other other nations yeah yeah so that's why that's why it is for the benefit still, of all yeah, but uh, 
then it never got the like knowledge or recognition what, yeah, they no, never yeah. got the why recognition. these countries you know like uh, pakistan afghanistan and bangladesh even iraq they have like a yeah. particular cases of you know like forced conversions and threatened threatened yeah. threat killed like mass murders and every single thing and kids and even families the children also they massacred publicly exactly but the main motto that's what i'm telling you their motto is global dominance okay yeah so that is their motto and that's why they are trying their best to convert every single minority present in their islamic republic okay and yeah. uh, they are trying to have as many kids yeah. just <laughs> to expand their population they want global dominance that is like if you take a look at the global charts christianity yeah. was growing at massive speed yeah. a while ago a while ago then it was muslims then it was hindus okay but somehow hindus went very down right now okay okay because of the two kids rule and after that christianity is also on the second number and i think number one massively growing yeah. is islam yeah is islam no, no, so no, they no. Have, yeah because uh, the thing is conversions yeah, and yeah. after that uh, all we can say is like oppressions and like forceful right, right. conversions Force, yeah it's just direct coercions they, they were held at gunpoint yeah. that's a little thing and the uh, people uh, yeah. even now there are very muslims even like we have a muslim friends but they can be proud of this sure but you have to actually study that how these conversions were made If yeah there's force then there's no meaning to religion like you just need exactly. an excuse yeah and many like conversion happened in india but it was by choice okay yeah, yeah. you were given a choice and they did it by you know out of their happiness yeah. they were not forced to do that right they were not oppressed like if you don't do this we will literally kill your family yeah, and stuff yeah, it was like we will provide you this this stuff if you would like to convert you can convert and a lot of people converted and it was their wish that it was their faith and nobody oppressed them okay but the thing in pakistan bangladesh and afghanistan is if you do not convert they will literally yeah, behead your family and stuff behead like what is beheading like it is very inhuman right and the thing the government is, like uh, in united nations they don't address these issues uh, issues like uh... this is uh, stuff happens in your nations and you're undertaking and supporting promoting forced conversion yeah. so still they don't take any action or they just don't bring it up at un they just don't bring it up in un because um, i think minorities do not have yeah, a strong have a say, yeah. candidate to raise voice correct, on correct. behalf of them exact if you are living in a muslim majority country all the ministers all the mlas all the big political people are yeah. going to be of muslim faith uh, muslim okay. religion so do you think they will stand against their religion and raise their voice for these minorities absolutely no their their, their aim is to completely convert every single person and reach global dominance so that is right. the thing over here and that's why india is playing a crucial role in uh, amendment of this act to you know help all these minorities yeah. because yeah. because uh, recently a lot of news were uh, prevailing on the internet like all the christians all the hindus were like literally oppressed in pakistan okay, okay. the tem- temples will be uh, temples were demolished yeah. uh, church- churches were demolished so a lot of these minorities were seeking refuge from india okay and even after being provided a uh, you know a refuge they were not uh, given basic human rights uh, basic indian rights not basic human basic indian rights so that's why this this act that is citizenship amendment act was um, provide, like uh, Launched, implemented yeah, past, yeah. yeah implemented just to help these minorities who are suffering in these three countries only these three countries okay pakistan bangladesh and afghanistan, afghanistan. beyond that any refugee has to provide a valid id proof yeah, yeah. and proof. Ma- yeah and they are not providing any kind of citizenship who is uh, from any citizen who is coming from these countries muslim muslim citizen because those are their country right that is muslim majority country and if you are not feeling safe there if you have to seek refuge in you know, a secular country then what is your islamic republic uh, doing for your <laughs> muslim religion yeah exactly and it is it is actually very good that they are not allowing because uh, i think uh, they should also limit CWA 
implementation because uh, they should not take every single refugee because already our country is beyond the 1.4 limit uh, beyond the limit of the populate like overly populated at this yeah, point I know, I know. so i think if we come uh, take like all of these refugees from these yeah, countries there are going to be problems for sure about the definitely, population thing definitely definitely i mean you just take a general uh, general common sense fact that you know yeah. india is almost 1/7 or 1/6 the size of usa united, united states and their population yeah. <laughs> and their population is seven times the almost yeah, yeah. their population so, is almost 300 to 400 million and our population is 1000 yeah. guys so it just doesn't make sense exactly and the thing, yeah. yeah exactly and the thing is if we provide them the same facilities which are being provided to every single indian then you know it's like literally uh, taking all the advantages from the resident who are currently or who I have know, been residing in our country like we are literally uh, not getting as many you know privileges as well as correct. opportunities will be less because because of more competition and more immigration it's not like we are like uh, densely uh, it's not like we are underpopulated we are literally overpopulated and <laughs> keep on like you know giving refugees to all these countries then it is going to be a little t- uh, difficult yeah. for a country but like um, where else they are supposed to go because every other neighboring country like around pakistan is yeah, uh, they're not, is, uh, allowing them yeah yeah they will definitely they not allow right. yeah exactly that's fine so it's it is both good it has both upsides as well as downsides yeah. but like uh, we don't know yet yeah. and yeah, yeah we got to so, see and wait for one year to see how the yeah is. so okay so that was on the, that was all on the discussion on the ca act in india passed on 11th of march and look when i say uh, the reference about the muslims and they're trying to influence the world and i know they are very what do you say adamant on their religion but i refer to the extremist group the extremist and the hostile terrorist group now these guys will target the young muslims or ganibu and they will brainwash them into doing things and even and when they do the mistakes they end up then the whole world is alienated because of the islam in general and even if majority of the muslims are again peaceful and innocent the blame falls on them because of these guys so in general the mission is done they wanted a war they getting it over so uh, these terrorist group is the main source of havoc and danger so again thank you so much for listening 